What's going on, everybody? I uh, finally made it up to the pit to give this new servo a test run. Uh, for anybody who didn't see the last video, a little short run down by the river I did uh, over at Beat the Creek. Uh, it's been a couple weekends ago now, I think. Uh, I ended up getting a Three Brothers g14 servo uh, kind of see it there but this is the first direct power servo that i've ever had and the strongest servo that i've ever had um, i've been running the 35 kg amazon servos for quite a while now and they'd be pretty good but uh figured it was time to get a legitimate upgrade uh, since this truck is so capable felt like it deserved it so today is the first proper test run on some rocks with the new servo so uh we'll see how she does I'm also trying out uh, a selfie stick kind of a deal that I just got the other day for the first time. So I might have to bear with me on uh, the video and get, getting used to driving with this contraption here. Um, I've always just recorded with, uh, wow having all kinds of problems but I've always just recorded with uh, my phone in my hand so I'm used to being bent down and crouching along like a madman while making these videos uh, figured I'd try something new see if see if it's any easier or any better quality that way the only downside is, is I don't have a, a microphone other than the camera on my phone. So with this thing being further away from me, I feel like I'm going to have to talk louder and get used to getting the right angle, apparently. I guess since this is my first real video since beat the creek uh man that was an awesome weekend oh all right i need to go get batteries for my remote i'll be back okay let's try this again got fresh batteries in the radio uh, let's see yeah beat the creek um that was the first real big RC event that uh, I'd ever been to. And man, that was one hell of a weekend. Uh, usually not a big group, social, individual type of person. But it was so awesome to see everybody's different builds and all kinds of the crazy stuff that everybody's doing with the hobby and all the vendors and everything uh, the trails were awesome we'll definitely be going back that's for sure uh, and then uh, we got our tickets in our camping spot for Axial Fest, all figured out. Uh, next month, we'll be heading up to Badlands, and uh, that'll be another first. Been wanting to go to that one for a while as well. Uh, 
kind of leads me into my next project. Um, since I got rid of the rift a while back, uh, I'm down to two axial vehicles. And that's two of them after I tear the gaffer down and put it back together with only axial parts. Um, and I just, I can't go to Axial Fest with uh, only two vehicles. That just don't seem right. So, man, my driving is off. Anyways, I uh, I did a I did a thing yesterday. Uh, I traded the demon off for a uh, we'll just say another axial rig that uh, will somewhat take take the place of uh, the rift. That'll be the next, well, one of the next projects. Um, like I said, I've also got to finish uh, tearing the gaffer that I just built. I've got to tear it down and build it back up. Uh, and that one's going to be a fun project, full of firsts as well. Man. Whatever critter is up here digging into their old den here has really tore this line up. Uh, damn near filled in with sand and smaller rocks now. Really terrible my style. I know screwed this all up. I'm sure this video is just going to be absolutely horrible with the angles. Uh, it's going to take me a little bit to get used to this new uh, contraption that I'm filming with here. But as far as the uh, events go, um, we're also going to be going back to uh, Maysville in October for their uh, Rocktober event as well. At least that's the plan. That's still a good ways out. So hopefully that'll all pan out like we're planning. But that place is just awesome. The trails down there make me jealous. My goodness. I think it's probably time to get the weed eater and whatnot up here. Get back to cleaning and building. Okay, let's get rid of this nonsense. That's just annoying. For anybody who did see, uh, I think it happened in one of the comp videos, and it also happened on the top level at Beat the Creek. Uh, I want to know if anybody else has had this particular issue. Um, so, I've had this with brushed motors before. I'm sure many of you have. When the brushes get uh, dirt, mud, little rocks pebbles whatever you get in there and they don't make contact or whatever uh, the motor locks up so if you physically turn it over by rotating the wheels then it continues on running just fine well this is a brushless motor and it's doing the same exact thing 
so right now uh, I've got nothing either way now if I just and it doesn't take much just barely rotate the tire and it's back to fine everything is plugged in as it should be um, I I just don't understand how that happens with a brushless motor um, I'm I'm no uh, electronics expert honestly I never taken the time to learn how uh, all of that stuff works so maybe it's something simple that I just don't have a clue about but if uh, anybody could explain to me why a brushless motor locks up the way that a brush motor does I'd be grateful because it always seems to happen at the most inopportune times. For example, on the top level of the barn at Beat the Creek. Uh, had I been there by myself, that would have been a catastrophe. Luckily, my buddy was right behind me, so all he had to do was uh, just give me a little bump from behind with his rig and she was good to go again. I don't know, it's odd. I just don't understand it. But, tell you what, the servo is freaking sweet. I'm definitely gonna have to uh, get me some more of these things, that's for sure. I was really wanting to uh, get a raw 500. But uh, by the time, like a dumbass, I waited until the last day uh, to go get this thing. I wasn't planning on getting one. But after looking around and watching everybody else's rigs out on the trails, doing all the jiggly stuff, and uh, not stalling out all the time, decided to go ahead and pull the trigger uh, but by the time I got around to it uh, the one raw 500 that I was eyeballing that had a lower price on it was gone so I ended up going over to the team K and K tent and uh, picked up the three brothers which I've also heard lots of good things about and understandably so this thing is uh really freaking awesome and i think i gave uh, it was only 120 bucks which for something like this is awesome sure if I actually went through and set up my endpoint. It doesn't appear that I did, so I'm going to have to uh, do that. Dang. Tell you what, it's going to take a lot of getting used to with this uh, selfie stick deal. I'm used to being right on top of the truck while I'm running and bent down and that's uh, definitely not the case now make this thing a little shorter and get up on it so uh, as far as the 
the gapper project goes. Uh, like I said, I've got to had to tear it back apart and uh, unfortunately take the element parts off of the whole thing and take it back to uh, Axial just so it's legal for Axial Fest. Um, but since that all originally came off of my 1-9 Wraith, I didn't I didn't want to put it back on the Wraith cage uh, just because it's nowhere near as capable with that heavy cage as it was on the uh, frame rails. So what I did was I ended up getting the, uh, uh, what was it? I think it was actually the Enjora brand uh, carbon fiber flat rail kit and I got most of it together uh, yesterday or the day before and uh, oh I think that's gonna be uh, quite the little upgrade it's got uh, a lot lower center of gravity obviously everything sits lower and uh, I think it's got a six five or six degree angled skid uh, so that that should definitely help with the the breakover angles for sure so, pretty interested to see how uh, see how that ends up turning out um, the only thing that's gonna kind of be the downside of that whole situation is, uh, since I can't use the element skid, I'm gonna lose my overdrive, or underdrive, well, I was going to, um, on day one, I beat the creek, I took, took the gapper out and uh, gave it a decent little shakedown on the trail number two, I believe it was. And uh, it, it took a couple pretty good hits in the front end. And I ended up uh, stripping out the uh, ring and pinion in the front axle. So unfortunately that uh, that took the gapper out of commission for the whole weekend. But when I got home, uh, I was starting to look around and I was thinking about getting uh, getting a set of overdrive ring and pinion for it, putting the axle, because I knew I was gonna have to uh, put a three gear trans back on those. And uh, I got to looking around and thinking about it and the stock axles that came out of that Wraith 1.9, those AR44s, I had actually put those axles, uh, I used those for my, my trailer. So they're not really doing anything really other than just getting drug around. So I figured uh, well, I can just take those out of the trailer and use that for a while just to get the gapper back up and going. Didn't even think about the uh, gear ratios between a portal axle rig and a straight axle rig. So I put those AR44 ring and pinion gears uh, in the capper axle and took it just for a quick test run around the garage after I got it done. And it didn't seem to be acting right. I mean, all the gears was meshed together and everything was good there. But uh, it, it just looked like it was wanting to upset itself. So I did the old uh, put tape on the tires trick just to see I'm no good with math, 
So if I can't see what's going on, I forget it. But it turns out that uh, that gear ratio in the AR44 ring and pinion is a good bit, uh, well, it would be taller, I guess. Because essentially I ended up uh, under driving the front axle with that swap. So that kind of worked out for the better. Uh, I swapped the uh, ring and pinion that I just put in the front axle with the ring and pinion from the rear axle. And now I've actually got a legitimate overdrive in the uh, capper axles. So once I put them on that three gear trans, then I'll still have my overdrive. And I'm pretty sure that uh, just based off of what I saw with the tape on the tires, I think it's gonna be even more overdrive than the 12% uh, that the Ecto here has. So between that overdrive, that more overdrive that it's got, and the LCG and the angled skid, uh, the Gapra might actually end up being better than the Ecto when it's all said and done. Uh, we'll have to see. I've got to uh, finagle some drive shafts together. Uh, I've got to cut down the shortest drive shafts that I got to make the front work. And then uh, I don't really have the money right now to buy a longer drive shaft. So I'm going to gonna MacGyver an extra long drive shaft out of the uh, extra axial parts I've got laying around uh, just to get me by and make sure everything's working good until I can order a longer drive shaft when I know exactly how long I need. That'll be interesting to see how long that thing lasts. But once I get uh, once I get the drive shafts figured out, uh, get the body mounted, that new contraption should be uh, pretty well good to go. Uh, start testing. I might end up having to do something different with the shocks, uh, being that. The, uh, the shocks will actually be laid down quite a bit further. I might have to do something different with the spring rate. It might be a little too soft. But uh, eh, we'll just have to see what happens when we get there. I think, uh, I think that's about it, rambling wise. Um, uh, this video is supposed to be all about that servo, but you know that I, I can't do a whole lot one-handed. Either way, that thing is uh, sweet to say the least. I'll get my endpoint set and whatnot. I just got sidetracked with these other projects. Since this thing can't go to Axial Fest, it's not really been at the top of my list. But I'm digging it. Definitely uh, money well spent. Hopefully, the next video, it'll either be the uh, Gapra 2.0, or it's going to be 
the new project. Uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave that one hanging uh, until I get it tore apart and put back together. But it should be pretty freaking awesome. I'll just leave that at that. So I think, uh, I think we'll call it a day here with this. Uh, I've got to make some room over here. So I've got a load of concrete on the way. Uh, from what I saw, it should be another pile about the size of that. So, hopefully I can get back to working on uh, on the pit here. Thinking I'm going to start migrating up that hill over here. And instead of just piling concrete up like that I'm losing a lot of concrete surface area by stacking it on top of itself so I'm going to start stacking up the hills and uh, get every little bit of surface area I can get out of it but yep uh, thank you all for watching hope you enjoy and uh, stay tuned got got things happening here a lot more content to come have a good one catch you all in the next one